Hey, what's good everybody? This is going to be the installation video for the 16th revision of the 12 inch Bosch dust collection chute. Let's get started. All right, so first of all, this is the contents that's gonna come in your package if you order it from me. Some of this will be pre-assembled. I just wanna show you how to assemble some of these things for those that are printing them yourselves. So this rubber will be installed. Um, this clip and hose adapter will be put together and some of these parts will be already installed on there. So let's go over the 3D printed parts. If you printed this yourself, you're gonna have the primary dust collection chute um, note on this revision, this attaches with thumb screws or regular machine screws. You're going to have the hose adapter. This mates with your stock elbow for those that like to use the Bosch, Bosch extractor um, that comes on the saw. Um, I'll show you a little inset picture of that. This is the hose adapter clip and cord clip. It replaces a cord clip on your saw. And then these are some wedges. There should be some spare wedges. They're just an additional fact, um, item for holding in the rubber. And then you have a little hardware pack, which will have some spare wedges. And then depending on um, how I've shipped yours, it'll have either three thumb, th thumb screws, or it'll have a combination of thumb screws and regular pan head sheet metal screw. I'll show you a little bit later, but uh, I wish this could be completely done with thumb screws. Um, you'll see that I've actually cut the slot into this thumb, thumb screw myself on some of the ones I ship. But um, you'll just see how tight the clearances are um, and why I chose not to do all thumb screw attachment on some of them. I'm sorry, one item I forgot to uh, mention that will come in the package if you order from me is this, this inch and a half diameter, 10 inch length of tubing. This will come in the kit from me. So that's what comes in the box. Let's go ahead and go through the assembly. So your commercial items you're gonna need will be these M4 thumb screws. You need them at least um, 14 millimeters long. You can also use regular um, pan head screws, but these are M4.7 mil pitch, and again, at least 14 millimeters long. You'll need a zip tie. I use these really nice um, industrial strap hangers. You'll need a set of rubber, rubber drawer liner, and you'll need this length of 10 inch hose that I also have linked in the plans to uh, McMaster car where I source that from. Okay, so tools that you'll need for this. This stock tool, it's got two different size Allen keys on it, comes on the saw, it lives back here, right behind the fence. You'll need a number two Phillips screwdriver. And depending on if you're installing the rubber yourself, you might need a little bit of a guide. This is just a little piece of cardboard from packaging. You can also use a business card or even a, uh, a credit card or a gift card. Um, so, and I use that for tucking in the drawer liner. So this is a one-way track. It's got some geometry in it that prevents the rubber from slipping out, but it can come out um, from time to time. Well, looks like I got the wrong size. This is actually sized for the 10 inch chute here. Like a full, I grabbed the wrong one for the video demo. Okay, there we go. So you just kind of start on one end and you slip it in, push it all the way back in, work it in along there, push it in. Most of the time you can shove this back in by hand, but I like to take a guide then and just kind of make sure that it's fully seated in the back of the track. It holds the best whenever it's nice and square and all the way seated in the back of the track. There, that seems fully seated. You can see on both ends, it's all the way down. See it there? And then these wedges just kind of push down inside and clamp that the corners of that drawer liner in there. So this little rubber gasket is what actually strikes on your workpiece and it can snag out of there over time. So if it ever loosens up, you just put it back in the same way there. And I have replacements of these on Etsy. And if you're printing this yourself and you want to order components from me on Etsy, just send me an email or I'll uh, have a listing with all these parts. Next thing you want to do, is assemble this. There's a little bit of a flat spot on it. it might be kind of hard to see on the video. And uh, that's where this mates to it. So bevel side up, this little rim here goes up and then this threaded portion is down. So again, chamfer up, rim up, 
and then I just feed this zip tie in from back to front. Bring it along, around like that. And uh, sorry, it's kind of hard to do. I'm trying not to get in the way of the camera here. Camera's actually like right where my body would normally be. I'm kind of off to the side. Okay, and I'm just going to start that. Okay, now you just thread the uh, tubing on. It goes on one and a half turns counterclockwise there. It'll stop, and then you can seat this down like right over top of it. A little bit of a lip there is really for the, the wire that's on that, and then you can kind of snug this down. Okay, that's as much pre-assembly as I'm going to do now. So now we'll go over to the saw. Okay, the first thing you're going to need to do is remove the stock chute. I'm going to go ahead and cut to some prior video of doing that right here. Okay, so there are four screws that hold on the stock port. You'll need a number two Phillips screwdriver to remove them. There's two up here and two on the opposite side. And moving around to the other side, there are two screws that come in here from this side. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these two screws from the back side here first. Now I have one of them out because I take this thing off and on a lot for demonstration. So let's get a good camera angle there. Now this screw is threaded into the plastic and there's a washer on it. So when it comes out, you're going to want to make sure you keep hold of it. And that's the screw you're taking out. And there are two of them. So like I said, I only have one of them in there right now, but retain both of those. Now go ahead and remove both of these screws. And again, for all of our testing, we only kept one screw in. It made it easier to take this on off. And this should slide just straight out to the side like that. Now what I like to do, because I may use the stock port again or I may sell the saw, is I just put those screws right back into their holes in the casting. And I thread the screw back in the back side of this plastic. That way I don't lose the screws and they stay together. You won't use any of these screws for the new chute. Okay? While we've got our number two Phillips out of the way or out, we can also remove this cord clip right here. It just pops right off. It's a little cold in my garage. Okay, now that you've got your stock chute removed, I'm just going to take this tool and loosen up this, uh, I guess I'll call it a guard bracket. And uh, I keep mine kind of finger tight. But if it's your first time loosening it up, you may need to use the tool. Let's get a better camera angle here. Okay, so you're just going to back that all the way out and let that hang down. And that's going to allow access to these two screws here. Now, the first time you are loosening these, be careful. Um, sometimes, so the hole in the casting is a through hole. And then there's this piece of steel behind it where the threads are. So you are actually loosening um, the screws out of that piece of steel. But I think that they either have paint or powder coating or something that gets in these holes. And they may even backfill them with epoxy. Um, but these screws, depending on your model year and depending on how it's made, these can be tough to break loose for the first time. So you may want to apply some heat, but just be cautious as you're backing these out for the first time. They might be locked in there pretty good. And uh, I don't want you to strip them out. So these are the original screws, I think, that came with the saw. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of lose my voice there. You can see that this one's maybe a little bit mangled. And now take those out. Um, you won't need them again. We're going to replace these with thumb screws. So now I'm going to go over to the other side of the saw. Okay, so here we are on the opposite side of the saw. This can be uh, a pretty interesting screw to get out. This goes through this this cord, uh, there's your cord runs behind this on the US models um, or North American model rather. And so this protects your cord from kickbacks of work pieces or um, off cuts. So this screw goes through that, through the casting and then threads into um, a little flange of this uh, rear guard piece right here. So again, you may have to break this screw loose 
Now, might have to apply a little bit of heat to it. But take that guy out of there. And this is what I was saying about the tight spot. So this is too tight to get a thumb screw in there. You can see that I can barely get my fingers in there to even grab this screw um, around everything. By the way, the saw is unplugged for this installation. I don't even have it anywhere near where I use this thing on the bench. But um, so this is the part that kind of bothers me. I wish this could be all thumb screws like the 10 inch, but uh, this is just too tight. It's better to just get a screwdriver up in there. So uh, now that we're ready here, I'm going to use a clamp. I'm gonna clip the guard up out of the way here so that I got plenty of room to work. We're just gonna bring this chute up to its place. And if you have one of the thumb screws where I cut a slot into, hopefully yours won't look that bad. You can see I'm off center on the slot. You may need a straight blade screwdriver to run that in. We're actually gonna do this right side last. So I'm just gonna give you another camera angle on the opposite side here. So hang on. Okay, so we're back to the left side, operator's left side of the saw, and now we're just gonna slide this chute up over the blade and into position. It goes up and over the rear guard here, and then you just grab these thumb screws here. You can use regular screws if you choose, if you prefer that, or you can just use these thumb screws. Just snug them on there like that. Oop, I didn't mean to do that. I'm getting out of sorts here. I forgot to uh, attach the hose. So before you do that, go ahead and thread the hose onto this piece. Just look at the threads. This one threads counterclockwise also there, a turn and a half. And now that's on there how it should be. So that's pre-assembled. Now we slide it up and over the blade. Sorry, getting ahead of myself here. Slide it up in there. Line up those holes and just attach it with thumb screws. Snug that up. Now before we put the guard bracket on, I'm just going to route this cord down here so I don't forget it. So I route the cord down and under the tube so that I can hook it in there. I'm going to bring this guard bracket up and just Tighten that back up. Now I'll see you on the right hand side of the saw. All right, so now we're back on the right hand side of the saw. You're either gonna insert one of these uh, thumb screws or computer case screws here, or you can use a regular um, screw that's at least, I think, 12 or 14 millimeters long on this side. I have the thumb screw on here. All right, good and snug on there. Okay, now I'm actually gonna remove my clamp, let my guard down, and put the saw in the down position. Lock it down there, and I'll see you on the other side of the saw again. Okay, so now we need the clip screw that we took out um, before when we removed this clip, and you just press it in there. Um, something to check Check the fit of this in your plastic. It should be snug. And uh, I found that the shoulder on this screw might be a different size depending on the model year. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and attach this like that with some inward pressure. And I'll show you another photo of this, but this should ride right along the arm like that. Okay, so that completes the basic installation. I'll give you an update, or I'll show some images of how you can attach the um, stock elbow to that piece right there. Um, that is long enough to where if you need to flare it to cause it to be a female piece, um, you can use boiling water to flare that, or a heat gun uh, to just reform that and flare it out into a female adapter. But um, what I found is a lot of the Bosch users are using Bosch extractors and they like putting that female um, elbow back over that thing and attaching um, their extractor to that. So I just wanna show you a few of the features on the 12 inch, um, or excuse me, on revision 16 that I'm really proud of. So here you got the fence all the way in the completely closed position. Uh, this will actually clear that. 
Um, I do recommend using zero clearance uh, throat plates or even a zero clearance fence. Um, kickbacks are the absolute enemy of this thing. Like again, like I said earlier, this thing is un unplugged. So if you see me in and around the blade, um, that's why I'm completely comfortable with that. So it will pass over the stock fence in the fully in position. Um, this workpiece right here is four inches tall. Um, and you can see that it's clear in that. Um, that should allow you to cut some crown um, nested in here at its uh, mount angle up against the fence. So for you trim carpenters, I got you in mind on that. So that hopefully you can keep this installed for the uh, widest um, range of cuts. Now you will see one limitation when plunging here. Man, I actually don't know that measurement. Let me, uh, let me lock this in the down position and, and try to measure that. Let's see, I got a square here. I don't have a tape measure handy. Yeah, I do. Okay, in the plunge then glide position, that plastic is um, up about two and right around two inches and that's fully plunged. So if you bring that up a little bit, you can cut basically four quarter material. Um, anything thicker than that when you're, when you're gliding, um, you may have to remove the chute, but four quarters about the thickest stuff that most people are gonna get. Um, I know there's some people that cut some slabs on here, but um, I'm sorry, just for dust collection, that's probably the, tall, the farthest away I can be from the base. Um, you can play around with different lengths of drawer liner. This is the one that I found I like for this just because um, it provides the best workpiece clearance as it's dragging over things. Um, and again, this thing is designed to contain everything that that blade throws back. This blade spins about 4,000 RPMs. Actually, it says it right up here on the motor housing. Uh, where is it at here? Yeah, 4,000 RPMs. So I'm not doing math in public here, but approximately anything that this blade kicks up is moving between 150 and 200 feet per second or uh, 45 to 50 meters per second. Um, bottom line, anything, even a small piece of wood striking this plastic has the same kinetic energy as a hammer blow. So if you kick something back at this thing, uh, it may or may not survive, but uh, that's just something I need to make you aware of because printing this out of uh, a different plastic is something I'm looking into. But um, right now this is the best uh, PETG and material that I can go with. And so uh, if you have any questions about that, let me know. And uh, just be cautious with that. Zero clearance fences, uh, well-supported offcuts, you know, making sure that your pieces go between the fences or are fully supported on either side will mitigate 99% of that stuff. So, oh, I guess since I brought it up, a couple other technique um, things, and this is in the owner's manual too for Bosch. When you plunge, you plunge in the outer position and bring it back. If you plunge in the forward position and bring it forward, not only is that bad for this thing snagging over things, but it's actually the worst dust collection case um, for the saw because any of this downward cutting is turning into highly turbulent dust. That's gonna get underneath your workpiece and out of the track and behind your saw. So when you plunge in the outer position like that, it's gonna allow it to throw everything up and into this and you're not gonna be climb cutting with the blade which can induce a kickback risk. Um, another technique, is, I mean, this is common sense, but a lot of people get sloppy when they're doing repeated cuts. Keep the saw in the down position until the blade stops spinning and then raise it. If you raise it up through a workpiece, it has a tendency to snag and kick things back. So those are some tips for mitigating kickback uh, along with a zero clearance fence or uh, some people even cut like a U-shaped zero clearance fence. And that's what we designed this to fit around. You could have a nice U-shaped zero clearance fence, get really good cut quality, and really support your work pieces and be safe and dust free. Well, dust reduced for uh, a large amount of cuts. So I hope you like it. Let me know if you have questions in the comments down below. You can always email me and I'll put a link to it on Etsy too for those that uh, aren't following the link in the the installation instructions to see this. Hey, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new here, I'm gonna throw a subscribe button right above me. Feel free to click it if this is something you're interested in. I'll have lots more videos like it. I'm gonna put a couple videos over here to my right that I think you'll enjoy. Feel free to check them out. If you found some value in this video, hit the thumbs up button. It helps this video do a little bit better. So do your comments. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this video or your tips that go along with it. Thanks again for watching all the way to the end of the video and I'll see you in the next one.